This is KGW News at Sunrise. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tim Gordon, and it is 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, this morning on Sunrise, kids can now get the Pfizer COVID vaccine. Hear what families are saying as they make their decisions about vaccinating their children. Plus, the Portland Trailblazers look into one of their own. We'll break down what reports say about the general manager's behavior. But first, let's check in with Chris McGinnis for a quick look at that forecast. Chris. Good morning, Tim. Off to kind of a wet start out there. Pick it up right where yesterday left off. Here's a look at the radar satellite loop over the last several hours. And you know what? I'll step over here. And there you can see this little whirling area of storminess, uh, low pressure here offshore that continues to drive bands of showers into the Pacific Northwest. Up in the higher elevations, above about 3,000 feet on the Oregon side, that is snow. Down here where the rest of us are, it is rain. It's still dark out there, but sunrise, of course, earlier this morning with the time change. And thank you for joining us. I hope you all are very well refreshed after an extra hour of sleep. It's 45 last check at PDX. 42 right now in Hillsboro. Big picture across the state in the 20s in eastern Oregon right now. Burns. John Day, Baker City waking up in the uh, lower 20s right now. Bend sits at 32 degrees. All right, the plan for today, a lot like yesterday, we'll probably even see more sun breaks from time to time, but we also have numerous showers in the plan uh, for our Sunday. Note the sunrise again just before 7 o'clock. Sunset tonight with the time change now before 5 o'clock. Showers and sun breaks in the forecast. Tim, it's possible. Just like yesterday, we hear a rumble of thunder at some point this afternoon. Your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks a lot, Chris. Well, some Portlanders are mourning loved ones this morning. At least two people are dead from falling tree branches. Uh, first, Portland got a call on Northeast Sandy and 118th. Two people were camping under a tree when a large branch fell on them Saturday morning. Now, one died, the other went to the hospital. Police say the tree was severely deteriorated and an arborist came out to make sure that it is now safe. Then Multnomah County Sheriff's deputies responded to Thousand Acres Dog Park out near the Sandy River around 1115 yesterday. A group of youth volunteers were planting trees when a tree, a branch from a tree fell and hit a teenager. That teen died at the scene despite life-saving efforts. We're told the tree was like all the others around it. An arborist warned this winter more branches could come down like this. They say the drought we've experienced combined with February's ice storm and the summer heat dome put a lot of stress on trees. It created really the perfect storm. So even a small amount of rain or wind can cause trees to break or fall. We checked in with a tree company earlier this week. It has been responding to dozens of calls for trees falling onto houses, garages and fences. Experts say uh, check the tops of trees to look for dead or broken branches. You should also look around the tree's base for mushrooms. Those could be a sign of decay. Well, this morning we are learning more about the investigation surrounding Portland Trailblazers general manager Neil Olshay. The team acknowledged the investigation yesterday. Art Edwards unpacks what we know so far. Both The Athletic and Yahoo Sports were the first to report the Blazers launched an independent investigation into President of Basketball Operations Neil Olshay. The Blazers issued a statement Saturday on Twitter that said in part, the organization was recently notified of concerns around workplace environment by non-player personnel at the practice facility. The statement went on to say, while we cannot comment on this pending matter, we are committed to continuing to build an organization that positively impacts our colleagues, communities, and the world in which we live and play. The team hired the law firm O'Melveny and Meyer to conduct an independent review, and further action may be taken based on the outcome. Blazers head coach Chauncey Billups spoke with reporters before the Lakers game and was asked about the situation. So what, every, what everybody read is, is the extent of it for us. You know, until we find out more, it's not much that any of us can really say. But he knows it's something he and players will have to deal with. It's, it's a distraction because there's so much talk about it, obviously. Um, but I can honestly say when I'm in that office and I'm with the guys, I don't think about that at all, not even for a little bit I'm more concerned with the game. Blazers fans are also watching what's going on. Portland is a town that really appreciates and demands the best from their everyone who represents us. Yeah. So I want them to really make sure that we're being represented well. So please investigate fully. Olshay joined the Trailblazers in 2012 as general manager. He was promoted to president of basketball operations in 2015. 
Olshay has yet to comment on the reports or the investigation. Art Edwards, KGW News. Okay, the CDC and FDA approving Pfizer's COVID vaccine for kids. Hundreds in Portland are getting the shot. Now, Selwood Medical Clinic took over the parking lot at Oaks Amusement Park this weekend. It received about 1,200 doses of the vaccine and is vaccinating kids 5 to 11 years old. Of those 1,200 doses, they still have around 350 to administer today. Uh, parents and kids who showed up say this is a big relief. One preteen said she cannot wait to spend more time with her friends. I'm vaccinated now, and that was really, really exciting for me, and I was really happy to be vaccinated. So it's going to be really exciting for me to be able to go inside their houses and maybe even have sleepovers with them, so I'm really excited for that. Now, Selwood Medical Clinic is expecting more doses next week, so it plans to host clinics Thursday and Friday next week at Oaks Park. Well, school staffing shortages continue to be a big problem for districts across the state. Uh, parents say it's leading to disruptions. At one Portland school, bus routes are getting canceled. The district says it's because of a lack of drivers. And as Christine Pitawanich found out, that's leaving some kids unable to get to class. Oh, um, my name's Andrea Tomlin. I am a parent of two kids that go to Ainsworth Elementary. I mean, the school year's been overall pretty good. Even so, there have been some rough spots for parents. Our bus route gets canceled pretty much every day. My name's Jamie Davis. This is the beginning of week four that our, his bus has been canceled. Portland Public Schools, like so many districts, is experiencing a shortage of bus drivers. That, the district says, has led to daily changes and cancellations of some bus routes. But more drivers are being hired and trained. We've asked the district how many routes are being canceled each day and how long it's been happening. But those answers are still unclear. Luckily, we are, you know, we're in a position where we can take our kids to school very easily. But Tomlin says there are some kids who aren't getting to school. She's a part of the Parent Teacher Association and works closely with school leaders. They reached out and said, is there anything that the PTA can do? Because we have kids that have not been in school for two weeks. Tomlin says she's getting calls from other parents. Saying what can we do and how can we help? And we're driving past these kids that are standing at bus stops waiting for the bus and they don't even know that it's not coming. So she jumped in to help. I mean, I spent a weekend calling churches to see if I could find 15 passenger vans. Insurance and liability made that plan tough. Parents organized carpools, but it doesn't feel like it's quite enough. Even those parents who think that this doesn't impact them, it does. It impacts all of us because we are, we're in this together. Parents I spoke to say they wish they had more communication with the district, especially in regards to how decisions are being made around bus cancellations. The district sent KGW a statement that said in part, we have made it a priority to cover all SPED routes first to lessen the impact to these families, SPED meaning special education. But no word yet on whether there are plans to get kids to school who don't have access to other transportation. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Well, students in Gresham have something to celebrate after a difficult year and a half through the pandemic. Their school is renovated and ready. Gresham High School had a dedication ceremony and open house. The event featured student performances and a ribbon cutting. A school bond funded that project. It has 53 new classrooms, a new band and choir room, and black box theater. I am honored, proud to be the leader of this community to walk into this building each morning and lead this fantastic group of educators and future leaders is an amazing feeling. I continue to be in awe of the work both our, both our staff and students do in and outside of the classroom. What a great group to lead. And a great renovated building to be in. In addition to the building improvements, construction crews preserve some historic elements from the original building. Well, Oregon wineries took a big hit from the wildfire season, but researchers are working on a way to shield grapes from all that smoke. We'll show you the work that they're doing when we come back.